Hi, this is Tracy Kite with Georgia Highlands College, and today's video topic is zeros of polynomial functions. This is from the Unit 3 section of College Algebra, and it is Section 5.5, Factors and Zeros. First, we need to know what are zeros. Polynomials are a product of its factors. To write the equation of a polynomial, we write f at x is equal to a times its factors. Consider this graph. The zeros are also known as the x-intercepts. So for the graph of this function, we need to look and see what our zeros are. So we have a zero here, 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 and here. So our four zeros are negative 2, negative 1, 1, and 2. These are our zeros. So that makes our factors x plus 2, x plus 1, x minus 1 and x minus 2. Other key things we can see from the graph are the y-intercept, which is the point 0, 4. We can notice the two minimums here, there are local minimums, or here and here. And we notice the end behavior. Both ends are going to positive infinity. This means this is going to be a positive, even function. So let's see what else we need to know about this function. Once we have the factors, we can solve for a to make sure that we have all of the zeros. So let's count the turning points, 1, 2, 3, and add 1. So we know that this is 4th degree polynomial, so we should have 4 zeros. We found that our factors were x plus 2, x plus 1, x minus 1, and x minus 2. But to find the equation, we need to find out what our a term is. So we need another point on our graph, and we can use any point, but the y-intercept is often easiest to use. So I'm going to use the point 0, 4 to find a. Well, 4 is my y value, so I'm going to substitute it in for f at x. 4 is equal to a times. My x value is 0, so 0 plus 2, 0 plus 1, 0 minus 1, and 0 minus Two. This means 4 is equal to a times 2 times 1 is 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 times negative 2, which would give me positive 4. So I divide both sides by 4 and I find out that a is equivalent to 1. So the function graphed is the function x plus 2 times x plus 1 times x minus 1 times x minus 2. Let's look at another one. In this example, we're given one of the zeros of a function, 
and we are asked to find all remaining real zeros. The first thing we'll need to do is to divide out this zero. You can use synthetic or long division. I'm going to use long division. In this example, so we've got 8x cubed plus x squared minus 55x plus 42. I made sure I did not need any placeholders. And that's going to give me 8x squared, which is 8x cubed plus 24x squared. I change both the signs. These two are eliminated. And I'm left with negative 23 x squared minus 55 x. Negative 23. Multiply that back through. So negative 23 x squared minus 69 x, draw your line and change your signs. Those two are eliminated, negative 55 plus 69 gives me 14 x, bring down my 42. Multiply by 14. 14 times x is 14x. 14 times 3 is 42. Draw your line and change your signs. And you should get a remainder of 0 because we were told that this one was one of the zeros. So we know that we have x plus 3 times 8x squared minus 23x plus 14. Now we need to see if we can either factor 8x squared minus 23 plus 14 or we can use the quadratic formula. To factor 8x squared minus 23x plus 14. We need to multiply 8 times 14, which gives us 112x squared. I want factors of 112 that I can combine to get negative 23, and those would be 2 and 56. 3 won't go into it. 4 goes into it 28 times. 7 goes into it 16 times. So I notice 7 and 16 will combine to give me 23 if they're both negative. And when I multiply them, I would be given a positive 112x squared. So that works. So I plug those back in. Negative 7x minus 16x plus 14. I didn't change the problem because negative 7x minus 16x is the same as negative 23x. And now I'm going to factor this one by grouping. So I'm going to group the first two terms and the last two terms together. Still got my x, my x plus 3. 8x squared minus 7x. I factor out an x. And I'm left with 8x minus 7. On this one I can factor out a negative 2 and I'm left with 8x minus 7. And with regrouping we see that we have x plus 3, x minus 2, and 8x minus 7. So our zeros would be 
negative 3. Two and seven eighths. To get these values, you simply set each factor equal to zero and solve it. Because if any of those terms equal zero, then I'm multiplying it by zero which would give me an answer of 0. So 8x minus 7 equals 0. 8x equals 7. So x equals 7 eighths. And this gives me my three zeros for my cubic expression. Let's look at one more example. Given a function and one factor, find all remaining real zeros. Well, again, this time we're given one of the factors, so we need to divide that factor out so that we can see what the other factors are. So I'm going to do synthetic division on this one. Either form of division will work. 1, negative 8, negative 21, 108. The first term comes down. I multiply across. I add down. I multiply across. I add down. And I multiply across. This gives me a remainder of zero which it should because I'm given that this is a factor. So this was to the third power. So I know this one is x squared minus 5x minus 36. So I want to know are there factors of 36 that I can combine to get 5? Well, I can use negative 9x, and I can use positive 4x. Because negative 9 plus 4 is negative 5, and negative 9 times 4 is negative 36. So again, I'm going to factor by grouping, and I can take out x in the first one, and I'm left with x minus 9. I factor out a 4 in the second one, and I'm left with x minus 9. And then I regroup x plus 4, x minus 9. So using the original 0 that we were given, or original factor that we were given, x minus 3, and the 2 that we found, x plus 4, x minus 9, we can solve to find out that our zeros are x equals 3, which would be the point 3, 0, x equals negative 4, which would be the point negative 4, 0, and x minus 9 equals 0, which would be x equals 9, or the point 9, 0. So these would be our three zeros for our cubic expression. So zeros are also known as x-intercepts or solutions. If c is a 0, x minus c is a factor. And given one factor or zero, we can use division to reduce the polynomial's degree and solve for the remaining zeros.